Hey guys, happy new year and welcome to today's podcast episode. I've got a fascinating guest for you today, Hannah, and she's going to talk to us all about navigating success and self-care, balancing boundaries and ambitions, mindsets, aligning with purpose. For the section of the audience that will resonate, will love with, with regards to burnout, um, emotional resilience, recovery, and an it's going to be an all-around inspiring conversation. So, Hannah, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. Yeah. Um, thanks so much. Happy New Year and kind of set the stage for a fantastic discussion that we're about to have. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, what were your early experiences and how did you come to do what you're doing? Right. So I have, I guess, always been a highly motivated sort of an overachiever in my life in every aspect. And I've burned out a few times um, in different careers. And then my last burnout, I was in tech working full time and at first Silicon Valley company. And I hit a wall very hard, very hard. And I was um, at the time also a parent of very young children, mm -hmm. um, a lot of responsibilities on my plate. And I got to a point where I just wasn't able to get out of bed. Mm. And I lost motivation and, you know, a lot of big questions came up for me and I felt very sick all the time. And it became very, very important to me, critical, really, to turn this around and to be able to re-engage with my career because my family depends on me mm -hmm. and um, to prioritize my health and my mindset and my wellness. And so this work came out of that recovery and it came out of those, I mean, honestly, very dark moments in my life where I couldn't get up. And, you know, I did see doctors and whatnot, and there was nothing actually wrong with me other than that I was burned out. I was completely fried. Mm. So that's how I started this journey. That's where this work comes from. Um, and it's really a combination of everything that I learned in my own recovery, in addition to furthering education that I pursued to, you know, specialize in this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and it's a common experience among the listeners in the audience and especially the high achieving women and what are some of the most common signs of burnout that the audience can overlook and how can they start hitting these issues face on and addressing these? Well, the, the first symptoms look a lot like stress. Um, so irritability, anxiety, insomnia, poor concentration, sometimes like tummy type troubles or headaches, which could also be anything, right? Um, so those are just like little warning signs that sometimes your body gives like, hey, we're feeling a little too much stress. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're heading towards a burnout, that you're in a burnout. Mm -hmm. I think when you can really kind of see, oh, this is a problem is when you're losing enjoyment, you're feeling pessimistic, detached, and you're not recovering, right? So mm -hmm. it's normal to feel that way at times when we're working. Um, it's very normal. But if you take a break over the weekend and you come back on Monday and you still feel that way, mm -hmm. you're not bouncing back, you're not recovering, you're not reengaging. Mm -hmm. I think that's when looking at burnout, looking at what you need to do to rebalance yourself and to create the boundaries that you need and to create space in your life for joy. That's when, you know, that take that as a warning sign and like start doing those things before you get to the point where you're not getting out of bed mm -hmm. or you want to quit your job and just burn it all down. Yeah. Yeah. I remember because as a resident, I remember it would take me like 48 hours to recover from these overnight shifts. And um, it was, just, it was torture, you know, quite honestly. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing is, so, because you have a really uh, high achieving background from Silicon Valley, you know, female executives. So how do you balance boundaries and ambitions? And you've spoken about the importance of setting boundaries and share some practical tips on how you can do this. I think the first thing is identifying what you want. I think a lot of us are so wrapped up in layers of shoulds of all mm -hmm. the things that we should do and obligations that peeling back that layer and really finding out what matters to me, what really matters to me, mm -hmm. and then um, finding your voice and asking for what you want. Yeah. And I know a lot of women, even successful women in high achieving industries struggle to ask for what they want. And so it is um, a muscle that, you know, can be worked as a skill to be gained. Um, but yeah, identifying what you want, your desires, asking for what you want, delegating what you don't want, um, so there's a lot of using your voice, finding your voice in the establishment of boundaries. And then um, once you've set a boundary, you'll probably have to reestablish it at some point, whether it's you have a new boss or something changes within your organization or there's assumptions that someone is making, even though you've established a boundary. 
um, where you need to go in and um, reestablish the boundary. And sometimes boundaries need to be adjusted depending on situations. So just knowing that it's not going to happen without your participation, like deciding something is important to you is not enough. You've got to go out there and let, let it be known that it's important to you. And there are specific ways to have the conversation. And it usually it helps to establish what's in it for them in whatever the context is before you go into why you need this. But um, yeah, that's a whole, I mean, that's a whole course. That's a whole topic. Yeah. Asking what you want and getting it. Yeah. And then we could have, um, you know, more of a in-depth discussion webinars about boundaries. And, you know, one thing that a lot of female executives in the audience are listening to, and they may have this problem of um, hitting the glass ceiling in a, especially in tech or a male dominated industry. And um, also, facing like perfectionism and imposter syndrome, kind of talk about how those two go hand in hand. Absolutely. What I have found is that for those of us who are driven to success, the traits that we have, the personality traits, the characteristics that have driven us to success are the same ones that tend to drive us to burnout. And those, some of those characteristics are perfectionism. They are that um, relentless drive to uh, do the best that you can all of the time. It's that over um, that people pleasing, the perfectionism, that overextending, the being the person that's always on, always there to help, um, overachieving, uh, being the nice person, you know, the peacekeeper. And these are all key characteristics that lead to success that can result in success. Um, but when out of balance, can also lead to burnout. And the way that we you know, shift that is to look at why, like, what is the the cause of this behavior? Um, and usually if it is, if it's so extreme that it's driving us to burnout, it's usually fear-based. Mm -hmm. So whether that's fear of scarcity, like the pie is not big enough. So I just have to be so awesome that there's no way I'm going to miss an opportunity or um, fear of loss or, or of rejection. So there, you know, maybe you're afraid of being laid off. I know I've had that fear working in tech and seeing thousands of people around me laid off. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have that fear of loss or rejection. So you work extra hard. You make sure that you're seen, you make sure that you're on, you make sure that you are known as the one who will get it done. And then there's the fear of, um, of not being worthy. And I've talked to so many women who are proving themselves. They are established in their careers, mind you, but they are proving themselves still. And mm -hmm. that, that extra kind of edge behind that, that fear of not being worthy mm -hmm. can really drain you. So I think it's looking at you know, the behaviors that you have that have got you to success and maybe are pushing you over the edge. Um, and then looking behind those and see, well, what's driving it? What's the force that's driving this and, and adjusting it and turning it from a wound, like a story that's a fear and a wound and turning it into something more empowering. Yeah, it's very powerful because, you know, a lot of those traits that you're describing, you know, it's very common in um, physicians as well, you know, residents and, you know, healthcare is I equate it to almost like a battlefield because it's just, you know, chaos and, you know, the shit hitting the fan. And um, which brings us to this next question is transforming mindsets. And you have a program which you can talk about later. You emphasize shifting out of a burning mind, burnout mindset. And you know, what are the first steps someone can take to start this transformation? One of the first things that we do is identify our values. Um, like I said, in the busyness of life, in you know the the piles and piles of shoulds that we are buried under, um, sometimes we forget what, why we are doing what we're doing. Sometimes we forget what our purpose is and what really matters to us. So we you know we spend some time finding our values and and then re reestablishing our purpose because it changes as we grow and as we evolve in our life and have different seasons in life. And then once once we know who we are and within what context, then we talk about finding our voice establishing those boundaries and creating that space in our lives to be a full person. We do a lot of, like I said, the transforming of fear, identifying and transforming fear. So those are ways to sh shift your mindsets because fear is a mindset. Oh. So identifying the fear, rewriting it, shifting it to an empowering story. That is a mindset shift right there. That's huge. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we go through all of that. We look at more tactical things, um, but part of that tactical application is an awareness so we improve our awareness around um, energy giving activities mm. and energy depleting activities in our life mm -hmm. and, you know, go through an exercise of identifying each of these things, um, 
granularly, like looking down to the details, like what's sucking the life out of you? Let's find out what brings you energy and joy. And then creating boundaries and strategies to increase the one and decrease the other. And so there's a lot of mindset shift. And then along with the mindset and the awareness are tactical, applicable actions that we can take. Yeah. And for the audience that they can find out more about Hannah's uh, program in the links in the show notes, which brings me to my next follow-up question is aligning with purpose. And you mentioned that stepping into authentic alignment with your purpose um, can't end burnout. Um, you know, a lot of times, if you know, for example, you know, as physicians, we, we go in and kind of like to please our parents or our spouse or, you know, uphold these like societal virtues and it's not really the best path. So how do you, how can people align with their purpose and especially for the female entrepreneurs, executives, um, how can they reconnect to that? It's like peeling an onion. I mean, um, so in the program that I have, like I have several places where we do this and we get deeper and deeper and deeper because it's not just like a one, usually by the time you're, you know, mid-career and successful, you've got, a, you've got a lot of layers that you need to work through. Um, but essentially it's really about getting back to the core of what really does matter to you and what doesn't. And um, also looking, another fun way that I, that we can do it is looking at people we admire mm -hmm. and what their traits are and kind of taking those traits and then pairing it with what matters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then seeing how that applies to your um, context in life right now, your season of life right now. Mm -hmm. And um, doing these exercises, you kind of come out with, oh, okay, this is, you know, getting closer to your purpose right now. You know, it may, not, it may be different than it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. It may be different than it will be in five years, but your purpose right now, and then that gives you something to create boundaries around and fight for and have passion about mm -hmm. with clarity and without feeling like you're doing something because you ought to, or because you should, or because that's the way your dad did it, or your cousin did it, or who, whatever your influences are. Yeah. Like I said, um, once you align with your purpose, then, you know, it was basically the, um, the universe and the law of attraction use work together to enhance mm -hmm. that. Here's another question, you know, because uh, the most common word I hear in, you know, especially tech or medicine or law is, is yes. You know, you know, you, your boss asks you to do something. You, you can't say no. I mean, so how do you honor personal choices? How do you establish the distinction between yes and no? And because then, you know, it's really hard to say no when you, someone higher is like in, you know, and mm -hmm. especially when, you know, your job's at stake and your family and all of that. How do you? manage that? Well, there are a bunch of ways to say no without saying no. Mm. Um, and so some of them are just um, a yes and, <laughs> and explain the consequences, right, of you doing what they're asking you to do, because sometimes there's just not a full understanding of the potential fallout of an action. Mm -hmm. um, another is this or that. So I'm happy to do this that you just asked me to do. I'm also doing that over here that yeah. I'm supposed to do, would you like this or that first? <laughs> um, and then you're asking, for, you're basically just asking for prioritization because I find that straight up asking for prioritization doesn't land well mm -hmm. or doesn't always land well. <laughs> so sometimes a this or that conversation helps. This one is do at your own risk, ignore. <laughs> I've had bosses that had uh, rapid mind changes. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> like in 15 minutes, they're going to forget that they just asked me to do that and there'll be something else. Uh -huh. So I just, you know, I'll just wait. <laughs> see if this one goes away um, while I take care of all the other things on my plate. Um, so, you know, to do that one at your own risk, but realize that sometimes um, a request will come in or come up and then circumstances change rapidly and the request no longer matters, mm. which you probably thought I've already realized it's not going to matter, which is why you don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, so I, those are some strategies that I've used in the past and that have worked. But there's a, a bunch of ways that you can say no without saying no. What are some resources? Because I know you looks like you're an avid reader. And so what are some books or on um, boundaries or emotional intelligence that you recommend to the audience? And how can people find out more about you? Right. There are so many books. Where do I start? I was recently reading The Body Keeps the Score, which mm. is an, it's deep and heavy. So uh, go there at your own risk. It's not <laughs> a um, light, uplifting read. Um, but it does kind of spell out how our bodies kind of keep the, the traumas with us and, you know, but unpacking it is important. 
let's see, there's a bunch of books. I can't even begin to list all the books. But as far as where you can find me, um, right now I'm offering um, complimentary sessions where we kind of get to the, the root of if you are struggling with burnout, kind of where that is coming from and what's in your way. Yes. So I mean, we establish a vision for what your life would look like without burnout and identify what is in your way right now from getting what you want. So that is going on right now. And you can get there. Um, my, my website is serenesuccess.net and then just do slash call. And then that way you can, you could book that call with me and we can do that little exercise, which is a lot of fun and, and really can be life-changing. So yeah. And for all the audience out there, let's thank Hannah for coming on and um, sh sharing an incredible story. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people need what you have. So all of her resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to check those out. Give her a, a follow on social and um, check out our program. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much. It was an honor and a pleasure just to have this conversation with you.